y'all my name is Marina welcome back if you're new here so today's video is gonna be a little bit of a quick video but y'all have said a quick video is better than no video during vlogmas so I'm just going to show you guys what I picked up at Walmart I found some really cute plus-size pajamas and I'm getting them because while doing all my laundry that you guys have seen me do which by the way we've done a ton of more loads I have been going through after I wash it and getting rid of all my shirts and in my pajamas that don't fit right or that are super old or falling apart or have holes in them all those things I've been decluttering those so that I can bring actual pajama sets in so my life can kind of seem somewhat put together so I'm not bringing in unnecessary clothes while I'm dealing with all this laundry I'm dealing with all this laundry and in the middle of that decluttering that laundry and bringing in clothes that actually fit in our, our newer and I haven't had for 15 years so I want to show you the plus size clothes I found at Walmart and then I'll have an Ollie's haul for you guys and I got a bunch of stocking stuffers and a bunch of books and cookbooks I went in there and they had tons of cookbooks and I stocked up on them because I've been wanting to do something with cookbooks up on my fridge so I'm super excited about that I'm gonna show you what we got this is we're gonna start off with Walmart so Walmart has the cutest Christmas pajamas bake it till you make it y'all don't that sound like a saying I would come up with <laughs> these are super fuzzy now I sweat like a robber in the back of a cop car that's what we're gonna say i sweat like a robber in the back of a cop car so these are super furry and they are, this is gonna have to be a super cold night for me to wear these and not drench myself in sweat but i can't afford a sauna so we're just gonna work with this i got this in a size 3x i got this one in a size 3x and then I found this. Actually, Shane found these for me. It's a shirt and pajama set. It's got little wiener dogs on it. I love it. They only had this in a 2X, but I went ahead and got it. I also got pajamas that I can't show you guys because I already wore them last night. Um, and I got those in a 2X too. And they fit kind of, you know, they, they fit snug. They're not baggy. They actually fit probably perfect. Um, but you guys know I like my, I like my clothes baggy, especially my pajamas. I want to be comfortable in them, but they just feel comfortable. They just fit kind of, you know, snug. And then I got this top right here. It's a little snow dog top. And I got this in a size 3X as well. Walmart has upped their pajamas, y'all. Like, plus size pajamas first. What? Yeah, go Walmart fist bump. But, I'm in cute plus size pajamas. Heck yeah, I'm down. I'm down. I may get Nanny one of these because I think she would really love it. She loves this kind of material. Got this for one of the girls. It's a little earmuff and glove set. Then I got this one for the other girl, whichever vice versa. I'll just toss them in the stockings. Then I got these for stocking stuffers. I always hated these as a kid. That isn't dookie, by the way. That's dye. It still hasn't got... I'm about to cut my nails just to get that dye off there so it doesn't look... I've been digging in my butt. I hated these as a kid, but my kiddos seem to like them, so I got those to toss in their stockings. And then we got this little cookie set to make. We still got to make gingerbread houses. I have them. I picked them up at Ross, I believe. I think I found them at Ross. Ross or Ollie's a while back, and we've yet to do those. We also need to go see Christmas lights and stuff. So we're going to be doing all the things here in the next few coming up days. The videos may be shorter, but that's just because I'm spending more Christmassy time with family. But I'll still try to get at least one video up a day for y'all. I'm excited to do these. We did these one year, and we had a contest to see who had the best sweater. It was really fun. Okay, so at Ollie's, I found these oatmeal cream pie cereals. Look at those. How cute are those? I think my kiddos are going to love those. I love finding different cereals. They always have, like, a crap ton of different kinds of cereals. Like, it's... It's odd cereal, but it ends up being really good. <laughs> so I'm excited for the kiddos to try that. I needed some new finished dishwasher things and I found these. They were $13.99. I don't know if that was much of a saving, but I was in a pinch because I was basically out of them. So I needed them. I found these Christmas card packs. These are so cool. I got this one and this one because I knew a bunch of you guys said that you'll be sending me Christmas cards. So, I'm going to send you guys back a Christmas card. If you send me one, I'm going to make sure I send you back one. It may get there after Christmas because we're starting a little late in the game. We got the P.O. box a little later than I'd like to. But at least you'll get it. Hopefully, it'll be there by the end of the year. Maybe, I don't know. You, it might be January and y'all get in a stocking or a, a Santa from me. <laughs> I mean, what could you expect any more <laughs> from me? <laughs> I found these for hot chocolate. Tis the season for hot chocolate. I love it. 
I can only find stuff like that there. Like, I can't find these at Walmart. I know Walmart has them, but every time I go to look for them, I can't find them. So, those just hollered out to me. Then, I found the puppies. A little ornament, paw print kit thing that we can do with them. We're going to, the kids are going to do, we do homemade ornaments every year. We just have yet to do those too. I may do a whole, like, just Christmas vlog video where we do all the Christmas things in one day or something like that. And then go see Christmas lights at a place near us that does like music and Christmas lights I don't know we'll see but we're gonna be doing that soon then I found these frosted cinnamon roll pop tarts I knew the kiddos would love these they were $1.79 I found this for Cammy for a stocking uh present he you guys know he loves his toy story and he doesn't have he did have that one but I think that he lost it I don't know, he carried around it around in car rides with him. So, I'm pretty sure that he either left it at Nanny's or lost it. Then, Colton saw this for Cammy. It's a little Toy Story wind-up buddy kind of thing. So, we're going to put that in the stocking. And then, he loves puzzles and he's so good at puzzles. Nanny got him a puzzle for Christmas. Like, it's got like 500 pieces or something like that. And so, so I saw this and I was like, oh yeah. Because he loves Skylanders too, so... That'll go in his stocking as well. And then this one is for Colton. It's a stocking stuffer. That one's for Cameron. And then I got two of these for the girls. I walked by their Christmas stuff and I was adamant on not buying anything until I saw that they had red ornaments. You guys know I'm trying to incorporate more reds. So I saw these and I was like, oh, I could add those to my tree. And they were $5. And these were $5 as well, I believe. Yeah, these were $5 as well. I really like those. These are my favorite. I like these two though. Then I found these little gift tags. This is a whole book full of them. Look at that. Like they have all kinds. And there's 64 in here. So I got two packs of these. And then a pack of those. I should have got three books honestly. Because this one only has like 20 something in it I believe. And then these have 64 a piece in them. So we should have be good on gift tags. Or tags. What are those things called? Gift tags. Name tags. Name tags? Gift seals. Yeah, that We never call them gift seals. What, Banks? I've never known anybody to call them gift seals. <laughs> and then we needed more pens because my pens, they grow legs and they get up and they walk away. So I got a pack of color ones and then I got a pack of blue ones. I should have got red ones. If they had had red ones, I would have got it. I meant to get them at Walmart, but I forgot. But then we found these birthday cake Hershey Kisses. I got four of these to go in their stockings. They were 79 cents a piece. So that is what we got at Ollie's minus all of these. So I got all these at Ollie's. Now if you are a reader and you like books, kind of like my taste of books, Ollie's is a place for you. You can always find, this one right here is a huge drop. That's a big name. It was released just a couple of years ago, or maybe a year ago. I remember when it was released. Um, but this is a big name. You can find names like this and names like this in Ollie's for little or nothing. Like, you would pay $15 for them at the bookstore at Ollie's. I snagged that one for $1.99. You can't be all these books. And it's always changing. So there's always new ones coming in and old ones going out. All this is the place for books. So I'm going to break down these books for you real quick. Just in case you like the synopsis and you want to try to hunt it down or go to your Ollie's if you have one and find them. You guys always ask me what I'm reading and book recommendations. So I'm going to do this for you real quick. But before I give you the recommendations, I did want to let you guys know that I finally finished Crave. I was reading Crave by, can't remember her name. It's vampires. It's kind of like a Twilight ripoff, but like in a good way kind of thing. I had to rip some pages out of it because it just talked about things that I'm not comfortable reading about. So I did rip like five pages out of it. I'm not even ashamed. Um, if Listen, if I see dirty words in a book, if I see dirty words in a book, then I literally mark out the dirty words. Like you'll see a big black line and it's just me knocking out the dirty words. I just do that in case like my kids were to get a hold of it or something. I would never let them read my books because my books are for adult. I read a lot of young adult 
and I read new adult and I read adult. They couldn't even read half of it, but just in case they were to get it and open it up, just feel farting around and looking at it, they wouldn't see any dirty words. This one is the one I'm reading right now, Finished Crave. If you follow me on Goodreads, you've seen that I gave it four stars. I don't know how to work Goodreads, by the way. I just get on there and that's how I keep up with the books that I'm reading and how many books I've read that year because I try to read books because it helps me with my... You guys know that I struggle with choosing the right adjectives sometimes and like the right adverbs and I get my words mixed up and sometimes like I, I know the word I want to say but I can't get it out reading a lot helps me with my vocabulary and that sounds odd because I'm 30 but honestly it does like it helps me I'll, I'll notice that whenever I read a lot in the seasons that I read a lot cause some seasons I get one book in every four months but sometimes I'm getting like a book a week done the more I read in the seasons that I read more I'm more clear on what I have to say. I can pick better adjectives and pick better adverbs and use better words and use better phrases. So I like reading because it's entertainment for me and I love it. I just, it's therapeutic, but I also like it because it helps me with my vocabulary. I know I'm 30 and I shouldn't need help with my vocabulary, but I do. So this is the book I'm reading right now. This is about a girl named Chloe who is chronically ill. She's very ill and she's kind of been sheltered her whole life so she gets tired of being sheltered and she writes this list and it's a list of kind of like her rebel list and she has like she wants to ride a motorcycle on it she wants to do something bad stuff like that one of her things that she notches off at the very beginning of the book is she wants to move out because she is like my age and she lives with her grandmother and mom and she's just like I, I want independence so she moves out she knocks that off her list but when she moves out to the apartment place it's a downgrade from her financially they're really stable and she downgrades to an apartment so that she can live by herself once she moves there she meets the superintendent and his name is red short for redford and they have like this hate kind of flirtiness going on and she ends up enlisting him into helping her fulfill this list she's created and he's just the guy for it because he's tattooed and he has the motorcycle and stuff like that so I'm thinking it's going to get interesting I am like 40 pages in and I'm I, I like it it hasn't hooked me yet but it's not boring and I, I'm not like crying in tears from boredom which I've done with some books in the past so I'm excited to finish this and see what it's all about I know that there's another one there's two more i think in the series i think it's a trilogy so far and they may make more but i think right now there's two more books in after reading crave like crave was like fantasy it was like not high fantasy but it was fantasy for young adult after reading a fantasy like that it was 600 pages i needed something soft like a rom-com because i've tried to jump into two different fantasy worlds and i can't do that also crave is a series and i can't jump into that big of a series this close to christmas time i don't like reading series all in one go anyway i like to break them up because i am someone who it loses my attention very quickly and i can go from loving something to hating it if i read too much of it so i had to break that series before i read book two and take something like this a rom-com a romantic comedy if you don't know what that means and read this before i got into something heavy so I want to show you that to keep you up to speed on what I'm doing in my reading life. Like I said, I do have a Goodreads if you want to follow me over there. I don't even know enough about it to link it. I may be able to link it. It's just fearfully created. My handle on all my platforms is fearfully created. On Instagram, it's fearfully created too. Um, so just try to hunt me down and I'll try to accept your follow over there. I found out the other day, I somehow mistakenly made it onto this page where I had a ton of follow requests on Goodreads and I was just like hitting the check mark because <laughs> that's all I know to do. <laughs> so try to follow me over there. I do like in real time post my thoughts sometimes on books. Like one book I recently read, it really sucks. So I just put the author seems really nice because I don't want to, you know, they worked really hard on that book. I don't want to be mean about it. But I do tell you what I've read, what I've started reading, you know, what book I'm currently reading, all that stuff over there. So the first book I got at Ollie's, I got it for $3 and it's Nobody But You by Jill Salvis, I believe. This follows a woman, her name is Sophia, and she is a people pleaser. She has spent her life 
trying to please her father so she sounds like she has a little bit of daddy issues her husband she's always tried to please him but something comes up in the marriage to where she realizes that he didn't take his vows too seriously so she decides to leave when leaving she the only thing she gets from that marriage is a boat that she can live on <laughs> and that's not ideal because she gets easily seasick you can get all this from the back of the book also like y'all just give us a whole plot why don't you <laughs> but she gets e i know she gets easily seasick i should not know that about a character i don't know but she gets easily seasick so it's not the ideal situation for her she's got her boat in a specific place in colorado and she meets this soldier and he has a big problem with her but they get to know each other and some things from her past come out and it's supposed to get interesting three bucks and you're gonna hand me with a plot like that yes thank you ollies the next one is save the date by i think it's morgan matson i can't see the last name but if i remember correctly morgan matson i'm always up to date on all the latest books coming out i stalk books a million and barnes and noble their website all the time just for new releases and good reads i spend a lot of time on there like a lot of time being 15 minutes <laughs> i spend a lot of time over there looking for upcoming releases and stuff i think this is by morgan mattson it's save the date and this is about a girl named Charlie. Her sister's getting married, so they're all coming back to the home that they grew up in, all the siblings, and kind of spending time together before their parents sell the home that they grew up in. But things get crazy really quickly. A lot of things are going wrong. The alarms in the house won't stop going off. The planner, the wedding planner quits. Things get crazy. They all get really nostalgic, but in the chaos, they realize that maybe living in the past so much isn't doing them any good. Maybe if they live in the past, they miss out on the future. So a lot of things happen. Old crushes come back and stuff, and a lot of secrets are found out within the family that they thought was pretty much perfect. They realize they weren't perfect, like nobody is. So I'm excited to see what all comes out in this book for $2. I remember when this first came out, I wanted it so bad it sat in my Amazon cart forever, but I just couldn't bring myself to buy it because honestly, I don't like to get books if I don't get them from Ollie's or some secondhand place like McKay's because I have so many unread. I just keep accumulating all these books that I really want to read, but honestly, I don't have the time in this season of life to read as much as I'd like to. But for $2, I couldn't turn it down. So then I picked up the Honey Don't list for $3 and it's by Christina Lauren. This was originally $12, $12.78. I already had this on my shelf and I had forgot about it. I love Christina Lauren. It's not one person, it's actually an author duo. It's two friends who write these books. This one I'm going to send it to Lacey because <laughs> she, she likes to read too. I'm going to send it to her since I already have it. But it is about these two people. Their name's Carrie and James. And they are hired by this couple, Melissa and Rusty Tripp. And the this couple is kind of like Chip and Joanna Gaines. <laughs> like they have like this home improvement thing. They're getting ready to go on a book tour. In the height of their career, basically, the only catch is they can't stand each other. They're a married duo and they can't stand each other. So Carrie and James go on a trip with them all over the coast to do like a book signing book tour kind of thing and it's their jobs to keep the duo from falling apart because they both get something out of it. Carrie really needs health insurance so she has to stick around and make sure that they are on their best behavior and James was promised a super position if he just kept them together and kept them from killing each other. So they both have a lot of things to lose if the married duo Melissa and Rusty if they call it quits. Not not to mention they have a show to lose, a book signing, all that stuff, book tours, all that stuff to lose. So their job is to keep them together and in the middle of keeping them together they kind of start something between them, the two helpers, the two assistants, they kind of start something between them and they realize that they really should be fighting for them versus their people maybe like hey those people they're grown adults they're in a marriage maybe they should fight for themselves but we've got something we don't want to lose here that's why i gather from the back of the book anyway <laughs> so the next book is another big title i've seen this one floating around goodreads and all different kinds of different places this one's emergency contact by mary hk Choi. this follows two people it follows penny lee 
and Sam. Penny Lee is starting college and she's moving away from everybody. Sam is working at a cafe for a little of nothing. He has big aspirations to be a movie director, but right now he's got like 17 bucks in his bank account and he's just chilling and living at the in the cafe that he works at. He sleeps at the place he works. So he's pretty much fed up with it. Penny is super anxious about moving off and going to college, yet she really wants to get away from everybody. So they kind of collide and they meet and exchange numbers and then they keep each other up to date virtually like over the phone about their lives and they talk about some personal stuff about their anxiety about their worries and they kind of create a bond off of things that make them uncomfortable so I'm really excited to read this to see what comes of it I don't know if it's going to be a romance or if it's just going to be a friendship book I do veer more towards romantic books like I love romance books y'all oh I love them I not like the itchy itchy na na kind of romance <laughs> But like the love romance books, I love historical romance. I love paranormal, not really paranormal romance because I don't do ghosts, but like fantasy romance. I love stuff like that. I have my one of my favorite trilogies ever is the Escape to Paradise trilogy by Marie Lou Tyndall. It is so good. If you have never read it, you need to read it. It's an historical romance, but it's also a faith-based romance. So it's really, it's really good they're all on a ship it's really good it's really good sometimes I get bored if it's just like a friendship book um, but if it has a little bit of romance in it it can keep my attention then I found this I have no secrets by Penny Jolson for three dollars this one doesn't have romance in it but this one is the one that most intrigued me it's also a hardback but it most intrigued me because get this okay there's this woman her name is Gemma she cannot move or speak but she knows who the murderer is because the murderer told her specifically because she can't tell nobody. The only twist is there's new technology that comes out that is enabling her to be able to speak and she'll finally be able to tell people who the murderer is. Now, I don't know who this person murdered. I don't know nothing about this murderer. That's the fun part of this book. It literally barely tells you anything and I like it that way. Whenever it's a suspense or a thriller or something, I like to know as little little as possible about it so that I'm not trying to because in my brain I'm trying to jump to the conclusion and trying to find like I'm trying to think ahead I always I'm a think ahead thinker like I'm always trying to get four steps ahead of the author and if I know too much about the book if I know too much about the plot it makes it easy for me so I like a little bit of a challenge there's technology coming out she knows that the minute he finds out about this technology he is going to try to kill her it sounds daggone good, I'm not going to lie. I will probably read this in the dead of winter. I'm thinking late January, early February. Not during Christmas because this can't. we don't want this to mess up the holly jolly vibes. But sometime soon, while still in winter, I will definitely be reading this. Then we got Surprise Me by Sophie Kinsella. I got this for $3. Now Sophie, that's a big name in books. She's a big author. This book is about a very happily married couple. These people love each other. They know everything about one another. Like they know all the ins and outs. They've been together for a really long time. And someone casually mentions, oh, you guys probably have another 60 years with one another. And panic sets in for both of them. And they try to spice it up so that it doesn't get boring. And while in the middle of spicing it up, some mistakes happen, some things go down, and secrets are uncovered that make them realize they probably didn't really know each other as well, as well as they thought they knew one another, but they're still willing to work for for and towards one another. So I'm excited to read this. I haven't ever read anything like that before. I'm really excited to read this. That's all the books that I got. Let me show you the cookbooks. Okay, so I got this cookie cookbook. I got another. I think I, think I might have got several cookie uh, cookbooks. For Christmas time, I really wanted to try some new recipes. And you guys know Colton loves cooking. So I thought maybe I could have him help me. Baklava. That sounds really fancy. Um, there's all different kinds of things. Oh, look how cute. There's all different kinds of things in here. And I like that it incorporates pictures because I really need a picture book, y'all. I, I don't see how anybody just gets recipe books and it just has recipes in it unless it's like from family or something because I, I just couldn't do that. Like, oh, look at those. They look super cute though. There's so many different cookies in here. I'm excited to try them. I got that one for $5. Then I got this one for $6. Look how thick it is. I'll never eat all these desserts. But it's a dessert. Look. 
It's 2,000. Does that say 2,000? <gasps> 2,000 desserts. Okay. All right. Uh, macadamia cookies. We've got all kinds. Ooh, springtime carrot cakes. Okay, lemon butterfly cupcakes. Those are different. I'll make sure if I try any of these, I'll share the recipe with y'all. Coconut and chocolate cupcakes. That sounds really good. I'll share the recipes with y'all and have it linked. All the ingredients and steps linked down below. I picked this one up because those look like cookies from the mall that I absolutely love. And like I said, I was wanting to... Oh, look at those. Those are chocolate raspberry thumbprints. Ain't nothing like having a cookie with your thumbprint on it. Got Gardamom shortbread. Okay, that looks different. See, I like it because on Pinterest, like, most of the highlighted recipes on Pinterest are because they're popular. In cookbooks, you can find things that are different. Ooh, look at those. Oh, dark chocolate dreams. I like the names of them, too. You can find different things on here. Oh, look at those chocolate cookie pops. That looks really good. I found this secret restaurant recipes and it intrigued me because it's supposed to be like, look at this. This is tuna salad by Panera Bread. Tuna salad sandwich. So it has recipes from like inspired by uh, restaurants. And this is Portillo's garbage salad. Okay. <laughs> Um, this one is Corner Bakery Cafe's Autumn Harvest Salad. So, this one is Carababa's Italian Grill Meatballs and Ricotta. That looks good. I'm excited to try that one. Then I got the Ultimate Crock Pot Cookbook. The Ultimate Crock Pot Cookbook. And it's got tons of slow cooker recipes in it. That I'm really excited to try. And then underneath those cookbooks, I just got some of these to stick in Cammie's uh, stockings if they'll fit. And if not, I'll just wrap them up and put them beside it. All right, y'all, that's it for this video. I know it was super short, but a short video is better than no video, like I said. And I have to run and do something nice for Nanny's birthday. Tomorrow is Nanny's birthday. She will be 68. And I'm going to make it a banger. I'm going to, while she's at church tonight, we're going to sneak to Hobby Lobby. We're going to pick her out something. I may vlog it. Like I said, I don't want to exploit the fact that I'm getting her things. You know what I mean? Like, I don't ever want her. She watches my videos. I don't ever want her to think that I'm doing it just for a video. So, I may or may not record that. Um... I don't know. Like I said, it, it was never for a video with her. It's always just because I love her. So I might not because I never want her to get it in her mind that I'm just doing this for content. So I probably won't film that. I may do a clip or something, but I think it would be more special if I just did it for her. You know what I mean? It's easy to wrap everything up in content when you're a creator and you know show you doing your every especially in vlogmas because like uh, i want to show you what i'm doing every single day i show you guys random stuff every day but things like this i think it needs to be kept personal especially since i've already shown you guys what i got her for christmas um you know that i know a lot of you guys asked for that and i wanted to have that as memories to look back on too i want to have this as memories too but i want it to just be from us to nanny like she knows that it's just because we love her not because we need content or anything it would never be because we need content but you know what i mean you guys know what i mean so i may not record that but we're going to do something super special while she's up at church we're going to sneak up to her house and decorate her house for her birthday and we're going to get her piece of furniture from hobby lobby and kind of make it just really special because 68 is a big year y'all six she got two more years till she's 70 and I just want to cherish every minute we got with her. Every single minute. You guys and your stories of your nanas and your nannies and your grandmas. Like make me so appreciative. So appreciative of the fact that like she's still here for me. And I, I never want to take that for granted. I, I haven't ever. But I, I really never want to take it for granted. So I love you guys. I hope you have a blessed morning, evening, night. Whatever it is. Wherever you're at. Know that I love you. But Jesus loves you more. I love you guys. I'll see y'all tomorrow.